kids, are you ready to run the race? At RCC Picnic on May 30th at 11 a.m. at Seeger Park, get ready to face the 180 Challenge Obstacle Course. Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 20. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. I'm Erica. And all month long, we've been talking about commitment. Commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. So I've been training for a 5K race, and guess what? It's only a week away. <laughs> so I'm a little nervous about it. You see, I haven't told anybody this. This'll be my first 5K ever. My friends convinced me that I would enjoy running a 5K. They've been running for years, so I figure they know what they're talking about. We're actually meeting up tomorrow to have a kind of pre-race get-together. I have so many questions to ask them. How long does it take to run a 5K? Will my legs hurt when the race is over? What exactly are we running from? So that should be fun. Or, what if they get tired of all my questions? What if they ask me questions? Will they expect me to know as much as they do? I need to practice what I'll say. So, Erica, what's your favorite part about running? Um, the running part? How many marathons have you run this year? This year? Uh, none. If you were running on a track headed west at 12 miles per hour and a train 127 miles away was traveling from the opposite direction at 84 miles per hour, at what part of the track would you and the train meet? Hmm, I don't know. You don't know? forward to this at all. Maybe it'll be easier if I just stand against the wall somewhere and don't say anything. Hopefully today's story will help. It's about saying what's on your mind, even when you don't have all the answers. See you soon. <laughs> the Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Jesus and his 12 closest friends walked along the dusty road from Galilee to the town of Caesarea Philippi. Perhaps Peter walked with James and John. Philippi? Seems out of the way. Uh, maybe that's the point. Little peace and quiet? Jesus can't take two steps in Galilee without a thousand people showing up. Yeah, they say he's... Well, I've heard everything. Peter stared at the high hills ahead, one of which was home to a deep cavern said to be the birthplace of a Greek god. Philippi was filled with monuments and temples to other fake gods. Peter? What? Oh. Peter looked around. Jesus and his other friends had stopped under a shady tree. Peter, James, and John stepped off the road to join them. Water break. As his disciples rested, Jesus turned and faced them. Perhaps he knew that here near Philippi, where so many people believed in false gods, it was important that his disciples knew and spoke the truth. Who do people say the Son of Man is? 
Jesus' friends understood that when he said, Son of man, he meant himself. Some people say that you're John the Baptist. What people? Hello, John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. Well, that's what they say, just saying. Well, some people say you're Elijah or Jeremiah. Yeah, or one of the prophets. People had been comparing Jesus to many important figures in Jewish history. Men who called the nation to repent. Men who did miracles. Men who spoke the word of God. But Jesus was so much more than that. What about you? Who do you say that I am? As Jesus looked squarely at his disciples, they fidgeted. They had seen Jesus feed thousands of people from one boy's lunch. They'd seen him heal countless sick people. They'd seen him command evil spirits to leave. They knew Jesus was special. But it's one thing to think something and another to say it. Peter, as usual, was the one to take the leap. You are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. Jesus smiled. Blessed are you, Simon. No mere human showed this to you. My Father in heaven showed it to you. Here's what I tell you. You are Peter. Jesus was giving Simon a new identity. Peter means stone, something strong, sturdy. Jesus continued. On this rock, I will build my church. The gates of hell will not be strong enough to destroy it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What you lock on earth will be locked in heaven. What you unlock on earth will be unlocked in heaven. The disciples were amazed. Teacher's pet. Hey, we were all thinking it. And I don't know, the whole locking and unlocking thing sounds like a really big responsibility. Jesus knew there were things that would take his friends a while to understand. So he told them. Do not tell anyone yet that I am the Messiah. Okay. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Peter had the courage to speak what he knew to be true. And when the time was right, he would share it with everyone he met. the other disciples had a lot of questions. People had been wondering for months, years even, who Jesus really was. But it was important for the disciples not to just wonder about, but to talk about it. So Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? Even though they all had thoughts about who Jesus was, Peter was the only one who had the courage to say what he was thinking out loud. Sometimes it can be scary to talk about what you believe about God with other people. What if you have questions? What if people ask you questions? What if there's something you don't know? Well, I've got some good news for you. No one you talk to has all the answers. A lot of people even have the same questions you do. That's why it's important to practice talking about God. Sometimes it helps to say something out loud to really know what you believe. And sometimes you can learn something new from someone else. So don't be afraid to get a conversation started. You got a few minutes? I have some questions. Me too. I'm glad I'm not the only one. So when you're excited about something God has done for you in your life, share it with someone out loud. And when you aren't sure about something, ask your small group leader or someone you know who follows Jesus for wisdom. Together, we can help each other understand what God has done in the past and what he's doing in our lives right now. Here's the one thing to remember today. Practice talking about God. If you have questions, ask. And if you don't know something, say so. And if you think you know an answer, have the courage to say what you're thinking out loud. So what do you want to talk about? What I always want to talk about. Stuff. Oh, uh, I get it. Because you're a stuffed animal? Yeah! Get it? Because I'm made out of stuff! <laughs> okay, I'll go back in my corner. Yeah. Bye! <laughs>
We can talk with each other about God and ask questions when there's something we don't understand. Talking about God is an important part of our training plan. Here it is. Practice talking about God. That's what we get to do every week here at RCC Kids. We get to practice talking about God with each other. Let's ask God to help us practice talking about Him. Dear God, thank you for letting us hear about this important conversation between Jesus and his friends. It's really cool how Peter had the courage to speak the truth that Jesus is your son and our savior. Please help us be courageous like Peter. Help us speak up and talk about you with our family and friends. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Training the body has some value, but being godly has value in every way. It promises help for the life you are now living and the life to come. First Timothy 4, 8. Whoa, 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 Brandon, what, what? Take it easy there, man. What, the, you, you, you have to use those things properly. Do you know how many side effects there are to that? With this? What, yeah. Like what? Well, they cause flexing, bruising, exhaustion, tiredness, nausea, headaches, body aches, heart aches, fake aches, energy loss, energy gain, thoughtful conversations, pointed observations, excited exclamations, Neutral fingernails, you can't stop dribbling a basketball, flat feet, incredibly arched feet, scissor hands, makes you lose your keys. Water starts to taste like orange juice, which is really bad when brushing your teeth. Vitamin D deficiency, moist palms, all your electronics break, gawking onlookers, frenetic trembles, traumatic trembles, grammatic mumbles, tic tac tumbles, your eyes become toes, your mom forgets your birthday, you get too muscly and you can't wash your back in the shower, paper cuts, sc soft stool, so every time you try and sit down on a stool, it just collapses under you, you bump your head indoors when you walk through, tremendous laps, and dry mouth. <laughs> Whoa, that's impressive. Are there any uh, side effects to talking so fast? Uh, hello everyone, my name's John. And I'm Brandon. And this is the So-and-So Show. We've got a great show for you today. John is getting the crowd psyched up and ready to watch. Yeah, today we've got, uh, uh, Bible story time with Kellen. One! We'll have our question of the day. Two! And I think we've got a guest on the show. Three! That's right, folks! John just listed three things that are happening on the show today. He's three for three! Okay, you know what? Uh, um... Uh, <laughs> What are you doing, John? Just insert your name. Uh-oh, looks like John's starting to lose focus. No, I'm not. I'm just trying to figure out and what's going on. And he's lost it. Oh, can't keep it together. You hate to see that. Will you stop it? What? What? I'm just... I'm training to become a play-by-play -play announcer. A what? Well, you know, the person who says everything that's happening during sporting events. It's always been my dream to meticulously describe something that people are already seeing with their own eyes. Yeah, that does sound pretty exciting. I know! And here's an expert to give me some pointers. Please welcome someone who knows stuff! Hey, hello, come on in. Have a seat, have a seat. So tell everybody out there who you are and what you know. My name is Doris Nolan, and I'm a sportscaster. I do a little bit of everything, but what I do most is play-by-play -play commentary. 
Brandon is stepping up to the plate, looking to deliver the compliment that will put him into Doris Nolan's good graces. The wind-up, the pitch, and... Doris, so glad that you're here. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. I and it's that. a home run, everyone! He makes contact and sends it out of the park! Wow, it, it looks like you're looking to get into the world of play-by-play -play commentary yourself. Yeah, that's true. Do you have any advice? Uh, like anything, you've got to make a plan and see it through. I started reporting for high school games and worked my way up. It wasn't quick, but I was passionate about it, so I just kept going. And practice, 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 just like you're doing. Practice out loud what you want to say and how you'll say it. Is there any chance that you could give me a demonstration? Uh, sure. John, could you do me a favor and get me a cup of coffee? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Now, there are a lot of different ways to call a game. The way we're talking right now is one way. It's just a normal conversation. Like, you can tell John has done this before. He knew right where the coffee station was. There was no pause, no hesitation. Look at that confidence. Isn't that right, Brandon? Y yeah. Oh, no need to be nervous. We're just talking, right? Right. Sorry. Sorry. Confidence is key in this business. Understood. Another key is being aware of your surroundings. Like, I might call a golf tournament a little different. Watch. John has selected the 16-ounce disposable insulated cup. It's a good choice for this moment. It will keep the coffee warm longer, plus it's biodegradable, so it's good for the environment. Brandon? That's right, Doris! And he's crushed the cup. Was that too much? For golf, probably. <laughs> but hey. You messed up with confidence. You got to make mistakes, Brandon. That's how you learn. Let's try this time like we're calling a race. Oh. John's taking a pit stop to put a sleeve on the cup. No one wants a hot hand when you're trying to carry a cup of coffee. And the sleeve is on. It's time to pour. No time to waste. Regular or decaf? What's it going to be? Regular. That's the kind of fuel that'll push him past the competition. But will he use creamer? What do you think, Brandon? I... Don't know! No, no, don't feel bad. Look, you just said the three words that are the hardest for a sports commentator to say. I don't know. It's okay not to know everything. It's a lot better than pretending you know something you don't. <laughs> You're on the right track, trust me. Really? Really. Now, give it another shot. We're calling soccer now. John's got control of the coffee, but he's still got a big decision to make. Cream or sugar? Cream or sugar, cream or sugar, and he goes for the cream. A great call. He pours the cream in, a smooth pour, and an impressive showing. But he's not done there, Doris. John makes the bold choice to go for the cream and the sugar, but it will it but will it be too sweet to drink? He stirs, he sips, and it's good! It's good! Goal! That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you for your help. <laughs> and thanks for the coffee, John. Oh, you're welcome. It's Bible story time with Kelly! What's up, fellas? Oh, hey, Kellen. What are we talking about today? Well, today we're talking about a time Jesus asked his disciples this question. Who do you say I am? And we'll find out what they said today on... Thinking Out Loud. Here's how this game works. I will ask our contestants questions. They will be given a moment to think before they answer. And then they will answer the question out loud. Let's meet our contestants. My name is Erica and I'm a real estate agent in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm Louise and I wanted to give a quick shout out to my friends back home in Linwood, California. Go Falcons! Woo! And I'm one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. I am Peter. I don't think I have to tell you this, but just in case, the real Peter never appeared on a game show. Let's play Thinking Out Loud. First question is for Erica. Can God 
the creator of the universe and everything in it, creates something that is too heavy for himself to lift? Erica, start thinking. Wow, okay, that's a hard one. Now I know that God can do anything, right? So he can create anything. But then, God is also really strong. So there's nothing he can lift. But wait, can it be both things at once? I don't know. Am I going to sound dumb if I say I don't know? That's not an answer. I feel like I have to have an answer. But what if I... Time's up, Erica. Can God create something that is too heavy for himself to lift? Uh, um, well, here's, here's the thing. There are a lot of variables to consider, and what I am trying to say is I don't know the answer. Very good, Erica. You thought out loud. Sometimes questions don't have a clear-cut answer, and saying I don't know is perfectly fine. 10 points. I wonder what the points are for. Absolutely nothing. Up next, Louise, your question. You're in school and a friend wants to copy your test. What do you say? Start thinking. Ah oh, man, why can't I have gotten the last one? This one is so hard. I know it's wrong to let someone cheat. Of course it is, but can I really say that here? I mean, what if my friends are watching? I don't want them to think I'm a loser or whatever. No, wait. I know just what to say. So, Louise, you're in school, and a friend asked to copy off your test. What do you say? I don't know, Kellen. So sorry, Louise. You didn't think out loud. You did know the answer, but you kept it to yourself because you were afraid of what people might think. When you know what's right, you should let it out. So that brings us to our story. Jesus came up to Peter and his other disciples and asked, Who do people say I am? And they replied, Some say John the Baptist, or Elijah, or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And then Jesus said to them, But what about you? Who do you say I am? Peter! When Jesus said to you, who do you say I am? What was your reply? Who do I say Jesus is? Well, he's, he's a teacher. He's taught me so much, but he's more than that. He's, he's a miracle worker. I've seen him walk on water. I've, I've seen him feed thousands of people with a few loaves of bread and fish. He's, he's healed people who are sick and given sight to the blind. He's, he's the one the prophet spoke about hundreds of years ago, the savior that God promised. He's the Messiah, but do I have the courage to actually say that out loud? Peter, when Jesus said to you, who do you say I am? What was your reply? I said, you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. Yes, that's what Peter said when Jesus asked him, who do you say I am? He said what was on his heart. He talked about what he believed with other people. Thank you, Peter, for thinking, thinking out loud. <laughs> it's good to talk about what we believe. The more we practice talking about God, the more comfortable we are. You can talk about God with people who believe the same as you or people who believe differently than you. If you have questions, ask. And if you don't know an answer, that's okay too. Just keep talking. I'll see you guys next time. Hey, thanks, Kellen. Kellen, once again, showing everyone how it's done. <sighs> We're still doing this? Doris told me to keep practicing if I want to be good, so... Okay, okay. Reveal the question! Ah, who can you talk to about God? Maybe you can talk to your parents. Uh, or your friends. Or a teacher, or a small group leader. Or you can talk to us. Go, go ahead. We can't hear you. Still good practice just yeah. talking. After an intense episode of The So-and-So Show, we're ready to sign off here. So until next time, my name is Brandon. And I'm John. And we'll see you. Let me do it.
We'll see you next time. And Brandon has approached the coffee table. He's going for the regular caffeine, which is a risk for somebody who doesn't drink coffee. He's smelling it. It does not smell enticing at all. He's questioning why he's doing this. It looks like he's smelling. He's tested the public cream cup. Oh, he's putting the sugar straight into his mouth. That's great. It'll help the coffee go down sweeter. That's and he takes a big gaping sip. Oh, he spill. Oh, he does not enjoy it. Wow, I've never seen anybody gargle with hot coffee. Kids, do not do that at home. Oh, he doesn't have his wallet. He does not have his wallet. Is he going to make a run for it, or is he going to be an upstanding citizen like a host of so-and-so show should be? Nope, he's running. <laughs> Let's close in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.